Today on Bits, we're going to talk about setting up a shop. There are a bunch of different reasons why you may be interested in setting up a shop. Maybe you're into woodwork or metalwork, maybe you want to do machining or 3D printing or arts and crafts. Each one of those requires a little bit different type of space for the work that you're going to do. One of the first real things that you need to think about is what do you want to do and what space does it need? A lot of people have access to a simple workbench in a garage and some basic hobbyist tools and that can get you really far. But as your skills grow and your projects evolve, you'll probably want to upgrade and expand your toolkit. So how much space do you have? A small space is not an excuse for not being a maker. In fact, I started in a one car garage and Josh actually had a shop in the back of an RV. But just remember that everybody has a starting point. Don't be jealous of the large shops that you may see on YouTube or other places. You can get a lot done in a small space. Now there are some common limitations that a lot of people run into regardless of what they're doing or where they're working. A lot of times size is just the biggest problem. So here's some stuff to consider. Make sure that your larger tools are mobile. Put them on mobile bases that you can roll around and then lock in place when you're working on them. And if you don't have room for large tools, see if you can find them around somewhere that you can take advantage of, like a local college or a makerspace or even a friend that has their own shop. Next, you want to maximize your workflow. So it's a good idea to think through your entire process and then map out the tools and their placement based on the work that you have to do. You may want to have all your sanding type tools in one area, all of your cutting tools in another area, and that'll help you segment the different types of work. When you've got those tools placed, then you have to think about hooking them all up. Now, a lot of garages will only have a single 20 amp circuit in it, so you have to make sure that you have at least two. Most likely, you won't be able to run a table saw and a dust collector on the same 20 amp circuit at the same time, so you may need two circuits to run those together. There's also a really good chance that you won't have plugs in all the places that you would like to have them. You can either run those yourself or you can hire an electrician to help you add circuits and receptacles. As you're placing those tools within the shop, also think about the exhaust or the fumes that they're going to create. If you do have a lot of dust, you're going to need to have some piping between the tools so that you can collect that into one space. If you're creating fumes, again, you need to have a way to evacuate that from your shop. Now storage is another really big issue for a lot of us makers. We like to keep every little scrap of every little thing, keep every piece we find as a potential project down the line, but that can really come back to bite you. You may want to break your storage requirements down into a few different categories. Stuff you're going to use on a daily basis, stuff you're keeping for a future project, and the stuff that is just long-term storage. You may also want to consider that a lot of what you keep is actually trash and you should get rid of it. So as you've broken down what you're going to store into those categories, then make them accessible based on their priority. Deep storage can be hidden high above in the top of a room or behind other things. You don't need to get to that very often. But the stuff you're going to use on a daily basis needs to be really easy to access. But leaving those daily use items out can actually get really cluttered and cause more problems than it solves. So it's a good idea to have a storage solution. Some clear bins that you can label on the front and stack vertically is a great way to organize all of the stuff that you use on a regular basis. It's also a good idea to integrate tool storage into your furniture in your shop. There's tons of wasted space underneath tables and on top of cabinets that you can turn into very simple storage for all of your tools. Parts bins are another fantastic way to organize all of your hardware down to a single piece that you can store away or take to the project when you're ready to work on it. It's also a good idea to think about storage for dangerous chemicals or flammable items. It's a good idea to keep those things locked in a metal cabinet to keep them away from little hands and possible ignition sources. As you're building out your shop, be sure to fight the tendency to fill it up. Empty space is not wasted space. In fact, it can be a really big asset. Having a clear space when you walk into your shop gives you room for growth, it gives you an area to assemble things, and you just don't feel claustrophobic. This can be really difficult in a small shop, but try to make it a priority to leave one section of open floor space somewhere. The last bit of advice I have for setting up a shop is expect it to change. Before you know it, you're going to need to move tools around to accommodate some new project or some new thing that you're going to try out. I try to keep everything in my shop kind of fluid so that at any point we can shift anything around to make room. Ultimately, laying out your shop and using your shop is really personal. It's going to be different for every single one of us. But I'm sure a lot of you have some great tips and tricks about how to lay out a shop and how to use it efficiently. I would love it if you would leave those down in the comments and we could all learn together. Huge thanks to Lowe's for sponsoring this video. We've got a whole playlist of other Bits videos for you to check out and we'll be back really soon with a new project. See you then.